Cold, dry winters with temperatures below freezing. Hot, humid, and sunny days, the air boiling around you. Dallas weather is easily miserable without shelter to protect yourself. But this is what the homeless people of Dallas experience daily. In 2020, it was recorded that 4,471 people in Dallas experienced homelessness, 1,619 of whom were unsheltered. They suffer through harsh conditions with little reprieve. In 2021, the city of Dallas attempted to aid these homeless individuals, spending nearly $52 million. However, these efforts should not solely fall on the city's shoulders. It is essential for the community to involve themselves in the reduction of Dallas's homeless population, as it directly impacts the well-being of DFW's residents, from healthcare to economics. And with that rise in COVID cases, Parkland Hospital is seeing their patient load double. Brian, our hospital volume has doubled in just the last couple of weeks. And over the last month, it has increased more than 400%. Those workforces are out with COVID on a daily basis, and that's causing a strain. Medical establishments in Dallas have been particularly burdened by the pandemic. The lack of immediate ICU and emergency room beds makes it difficult for homeless individuals to receive proper care when experiencing illness or injury. Doctors are strung too thinly to properly ensure care for all patients. On average, people struggling with homelessness will visit the emergency room five times a year in comparison to the one yearly ER visit per five housed individuals. These preventable visits place a strain on the healthcare system and don't allow doctors and nurses to place their full energy into unpreventable ER and ICU cases. Patients are placed at higher risk of maltreatment if hospital staff must spread themselves thin. This is Dr. Kenneth Adams. He is the Chief Medical Officer of Texas for United Healthcare and was a practicing physician prior to assuming a more executive occupation. Passion fatigue, I think uh, a number of physicians, you get kind of frustrated when people out in the community aren't doing what uh, is recommended. Where though supply chain was a huge problem and not just with personal protective equipment, but with ventilators and the uh, types of uh, resources that you need to have when a, when a person's on a ventilator. There's so much disposable equipment that's thrown away after one use, um, and uh, we, they were having to wash it and, and reuse it and, uh, or, or just not, not have what you needed. By creating city-owned and community-driven operations to assist individuals in homeless shelters and housing programs, stress can be alleviated from the healthcare system. By having readily available healthcare services, homeless individuals are not forced to travel to seek help. In doing so, other residents of the city are assured that their hospitals are equipped to handle them and will be able to receive proper care. When it comes to spending money to fight homelessness, taxpayers already spend about $30,000 to $50,000 per homeless person annually to fund expenses such as shelters, jails, and hospital visits. These costs perpetuate an unhelpful cycle where the issue is not directly addressed and generates a higher bill for the city and for taxpayers. Currently, Dallas is implementing Proposition J, which provides temporary housing to the homeless until they are able to find their own place to live. The proposition calls for a budget of $20 million, and in the five years since its proposal, only 12.8 million has been raised, with the project having until 2023 to meet its goal. This proposal has the potential to drastically reduce the cost of taxpayers and the number of homeless individuals residing in DFW. Proposition J closely resembles the Community First Village in Austin, which provides permanent housing for those coming out of chronic homelessness. Community First Village also provides jobs for those within the community and what is considered a normal life. As a result of the initiative, Austin has lowered its homeless population and significantly reduced spending for shelters, hospital visits, and jails. If Dallas is able to reach the goal for Proposition J, 
then we too will also experience a reduction in spending for homelessness. The money also has the potential to be redirected into areas such as education. This is Ann Bever, who is a staff member at the Dallas Public Library Homeless Engagement Services. There was, there was a, a young man who's probably 20. And, um, you know, we get a lot of people who are new to Dallas. We have regulars, but we get a lot of people who are new. They, they walk over to the library from the Greyhound station. Um, they've just arrived in town and they need to find shelter. And they come to us. Um, of course, there are not enough shelters. Um, there are not enough beds. And um, one of the heartbreaking things is trying to find a place for them to stay. Couldn't understand why someone who's unhoused um, might make a scene over something that to us may seem trivial. Many ordinary citizens may believe that the stigmas against the homeless population are justified. For example, they may cite the growing violence in Seattle's homeless population to justify their beliefs. The man who took a swing with a bat on a random person in Belltown was homeless. Dan Neal is a parent and resident of the DFW area, sharing some not so unique biases on the homeless population. I usually think of an elderly person uh, wearing kind of ratty clothes, uh, sitting on the sidewalk or the street corner begging for money. With mental illness, there was always a risk that someone could be so mentally ill that they to trigger a violent outburst. When you think of an ambulance siren, do you think of a car crash? A heart attack? Implicit biases are a part of everyday life, whether people realize it or not, especially when it comes to the homeless population. Austin is the prime example of destigmatizing the homeless population. They have implemented a progress tracker through the Austin Homelessness Dashboard, gained partnerships to help fund endeavors reducing the homeless population, and have set up an incredible amount of shelters, outreach programs, and permanent housing. Austin's pro homeless ideals destigmatize the homeless population, allowing Austin to become a safer city for everyone. They brought the community into the plans for reducing the homeless population, and in doing so, they let the community get to know the homeless in their city, creating a connection with them. If the community gains knowledge about people they don't know, it makes the people seem less scary, and therefore, the community is more willing to help. Biases like the one of Dan Neal prevent the homeless population from feeling safe, leading to aggression. If we destigmatize the homeless population, it will lead to a safer, better Dallas. There is a simple way in which you can aid the city in their efforts to reduce homelessness. Donate. Spare five or ten dollars to graciously donate to the Metro Dallas Homeless Alliance. There, your donations will go towards their efforts and projects. We urge you to save what you can and contribute. With your contributions, the homeless population in Dallas will no longer suffer. People will have access to more resources. People will not be left to suffer in the cold or heat. People will no longer be roofless.